Hey there, and welcome to a, another masterclass from Scale My Cleaning Business. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for joining this uh, class. Uh, I just wanted to teach a couple of things in regards to being able to blow up your cleaning business in 2021 and really just leverage a lot of these, these tools on the internet. And it can be very overwhelming as a business owner when there's so many different types of softwares, there's so many different tools out there, plus you got to focus on managing your employees and a million other things, uh, not to mention your, your personal life, you know, any kids, family, things like that. And it's incredibly important to understand, uh, understand the structure and how to keep everything organized and take everything one step at a time and keep all of this as simple as possible. Uh, that is the first step. And also being clear on, you know, what your goals are and what it is that you want to accomplish. And you know, before I even start this presentation, I just want to kind of really just emphasize how important it is to understand your why and why it is that you started your cleaning business. Is it money? Is it time? Is it both? What specifically are you looking to do? Do you have a full-time job? Are you looking to get out of that? And if so, what does that revenue look like uh, that you need to make that transition over? Or maybe not even you know money-related. Maybe it's you know, having things systemized, having things automated, whether it's through people or some of the things I'm going to show you today, which is more of some of these online tools that can make your life a lot easier. So really just try to get clear on that. And, you know, if you have a really big goal, I mean, that's awesome. And that's actually what I would encourage. Uh, but also make sure, you know, you break that goal down. You know, if it's a million dollars a year, uh, break that goal down. And that's what I do with a lot of my clients uh, before we even set up any of the systems and all that. Uh, we actually just dive into, you know, what is your goal? How do we break that down? Um, how do we improve your sales process and your back end, uh, as well as the front end, which is just getting more quotes out, getting more walkthroughs. So uh, once again, welcome to this masterclass, how to use the internet to 10 extra cleaning business in 2021. And this is not an exaggeration. Uh, the reason you're able to create uh, not just a doubling effect, um, but also just more of an exponential effect is because once you start to understand how this works, how marketing works, how to create these systems that can consistently produce you business predictably and consistently, and you're going to be able to basically just scale that up and replicate that uh, for your business. So the hardest part is always going to be in the beginning and being patient and consistent enough to actually see the results of what it is that you're doing. Um, a lot of you business owners, uh, and I'm not even saying cleaning, I'm saying this just in general, you don't give things enough time. And I know this because I, I did this when I, start, I started out. I can kid you not, I was jumping from week to week, changing my strategy, changing what I was using and my approach. So what ultimately made a huge difference was when I was able to take, take a step back and just really just test things and actually see the results. Um, it's going to take some time. Like I really uh, want you guys to just focus on one thing at a time. Don't let this presentation overwhelm you. This is simply the structure and the proven path to growing your cleaning business. So let's get started. So uh, who is this useful for? So uh, three things. So if you are overwhelmed by technology, like I said, there's so many different tools, softwares, all that kind of stuff out there, uh, but you don't know where to start. Uh, I'll be honest, a lot of people I talk to, they have all the software that they don't even use or even need. If something is not solving a problem that's uh, a huge bottleneck in your business and preventing you from moving your, the needle forward and reaching your goals, just don't use that software. Don't use that thing. If it's not saving you time or making you more money, uh, I'm not really sure what the point is at that point. So always make sure that there's a purpose to everything that you do, every business decision you make. Uh, the second thing is if you are if you currently have three or less ways of bringing in new business, uh, whether that's online or offline. So if you're just relying on word of mouth and maybe just a couple of flyers here and there, uh, this presentation is for you. You definitely are not going to be able to scale up fast with uh, that method. Word of mouth is great, but it's not consistent. Uh, there's things you can do with referral programs and things like that that can help. Um, but I don't I don't ever recommend relying on that or just three or less ways of or channels of bringing in new business. So uh, always focus on bringing uh, building out new systems 
to get you more opportunities. Um, and then the third thing is if you are looking for more ways to get in touch with business and decision makers. So uh, that could be property managers, that could be you know, dense, if you work in the medical uh, industry, maybe dentists, doctors, chiropractors, uh, maybe it could be uh, superintendents, purchasing managers for construction uh, projects or post-construction cleanup, uh, any of these things. You always want to be finding new ways of getting in front of these people and getting them to respond in a way that they're actually going to engage with you and your business. So you got to do the stuff that a lot of people are not doing. And you got to put messages in front of people that actually resonate with them. Uh, you can't be generic anymore. We're in 2021. Everyone is, you know, getting in front of everyone with ads and all these different things. So you being top of mind, you sticking out and just getting right to the point, basically, and just using words that resonate with your avatar and your target, which we'll get into in a little bit. That is super, super important. Okay, so the first thing is how are you organizing your leads? So, um, you know, this could be after if you have like one or two channels, you're getting consistent leads, maybe five or 10 a week, uh, whatever it is. Uh, it's always good to have a good way of organizing this. So I would encourage each and every one of you cleaning owners out there to stop using a pen and paper. Um, stop just Stop limiting yourself and not following up with these leads. Uh, that is so, so important. If there's anything you can get from the slide, that would be follow-ups. If you're not following up, usually it takes anywhere from five to 10 times to reach out to someone. Even if they've already expressed interest, it usually takes five to 10 times for you to actually get in touch with them. Especially if there's someone who's in construction, property manager, certain industries, doctors, dentists, kind of the ones I mentioned before. You have to imagine these people are super busy. So it's on you to just make sure you follow up. Um, and then the third thing is just being disorganized in general. So if you're losing track of your leads, if you have a system, but you're not sure, okay, maybe I contacted this one. I forget who I sent a quote out to. That is, that's the point where I would start looking at a what's called a CRM. So what you do want to start doing is you want to start paying for a CRM that's going to save you time and also just make your team more effective and make you more money. So a lot of these CRMs, they try to upsell you on all these features that you're probably never going to use. Um, actually, uh, the CRM that we use and that we recommend, we actually give our clients, um, we start out by, by uh, only giving them limited access. And the reason for that is because we want you guys to understand certain uh, features that are important first before we start to teach you how to create campaigns and automation and all this other stuff. Uh, that's more marketing related. Um, but if you understand how to become a marketer, or if you have someone in your corner who does understand marketing or can be on top of this, uh, that is going to give you a huge leg up when uh, you're building out these systems and when you're scaling your business. Uh, the other thing is always uh, having and doing systems for follow-up. So this doesn't have to be like an email campaign or anything fancy right away. Uh, you could just have your own system of, okay, this is how I do my, my discovery calls and, you know, ask certain questions and schedule the walkthroughs. And then having a system for, okay, on those walkthroughs, these are the questions I ask. This is how I build rapport. Um, this is my sales process. And then you, with a quote, you have a process for not underbidding, overbidding, and making sure that you're also following up and making sure that they have everything they need to make the decision. If you're able to sign a deal right then and there, I always recommend doing that. Um, the, the longer you wait, the longer things go up in the air with uh, these deals, the less chance that you have of actually closing them. So uh, that's super important to keep in mind. And you know, I would really just try to focus on one system at a time. And also just try to uh, identify your bottlenecks. So if, you're, if you have a lot of clients right now that are in the quote phase, but they haven't gotten back to you, maybe it's time that you start looking at some systems to either give uh, better quotes um, or just you know, following up with them and seeing why they're not getting back to you. Um, like I said, it, it, it takes some work, but I promise you that it's worth it uh, to do these follow-ups and start systemizing it and creating processes. Uh, once you start doing that, that's gonna allow for you to free up your time uh, when you start hiring people. It's gonna allow you to have training. It's gonna allow you to have uh, things in place uh, and rules for other people to follow 
uh, for when you, you have enough funds to actually uh, employ more people to do stuff like this. I hope that kind of makes sense. So that's, that's kind of the bigger picture of kind of what I'm, I'm explaining to you guys. Um, the other thing too is uh, you want to be able to track everything. So like I said, that's, that's a lot to do with, you know, seeing, okay, where, where are my pitfalls? Like, where are my, where are my opportunities? Do I need more leads? Do I need more quotes out? Do I need more walkthroughs? Um, do I need to do more follow-ups? Uh, or maybe it's just on the fulfillment side. Maybe you're just scrambling around. Maybe you need to hire. Um, it's never too uh, early to hire. Always fill up your pipeline with new hires. And that's kind of, in, that's kind of from the other masterclass uh, where I interviewed Shireen. If you do want more information on hiring, uh, that's kind of a separate thing. You can just message me, um, you know, whenever, whenever you'd like. <clears throat> so uh, this is what to look for when you're looking for a CRM. CRM, like I said, is just a place where you're just organizing all of your leads and you start to create systems uh, for nurturing and making sure that they're taken care of, whether a prospective client, mostly it's going to be prospective clients, uh, but you can also use it for current clients. You know, if you have certain promotions you want to do, uh, and all that. If you do residential, uh, you could even separate that out in your CRM. Uh, but I would have something to keep things organized. That's so, so important. Um, so it should be simple and easy for you to use in your team. So if you can add different users to it, uh, that is absolutely awesome. Uh, I'd always recommend that. Uh, you want it to be reliable. Uh, you don't want this to be going down or anything like that. So that's super important. So big, reputable, big com bigger companies um, like HubSpot and, you know, the one I use is called Go High Level. Um, there's a couple of other ones as well. Uh, those more uh, branded and bigger companies are most likely going to be more reliable because, you know, they have people on their technical team. They have people on the development team. They're always, you know, coming out with new features. They're always testing things. Uh, that's always something you want in the CRM. Uh, the other thing is support. So if you have an issue with anything, uh, if you have any questions or your employees have any questions, you want to have a good channel of reaching out to them. A lot of companies nowadays, they want you to submit tickets. Um, if you can find one that has more of a chat support or a phone support, that's always best. Um, I wouldn't say that's a make it or break it, but it is something to consider. Uh, the other thing is obviously you want to be able to organize your leads, fill in information, and also track the sales process. I kind of mentioned that on the other slide. Um, and then also just be able to systemize and automate. So as you figure out different systems in your business, ways of sending out quotes, um, you know, certain things to do in your business to move the sales process along, uh, you want to be able to start to systemize that. Uh, so for example, in uh, a lot of our clients, we have different, basically what's called a, a pipeline. So if you're not familiar with that, uh, basically, let's say we get uh, 10 new leads from email, you know, people saying they're interested in cleaning service. Uh, what we'll have our clients do is actually drag and drop those leads to, uh, you know, the people like a, an area where, okay, this lead filled in a, or we gave them a quote, this lead we uh, did a walkthrough with, this lead we closed, we'll fill in how much they closed for. We're just tracking every single step of the process. So that way when I get on the call or even just in real time, I'm able to track and see if there's things that we need to improve. Um, the other thing too is uh, scalability. So uh, if it's something that you can just scale, so actually the uh, CRM that we recommend uh, is, again, it's called Go High Level, and that's able to scale very well because it doesn't have a limit on how many leads you can put in or, you know, anything like that. I mean, you're, you just pay, you know, the amount per month and you're just able to do everything that you need and you're able to set up as many campaigns as you want and all that kind of stuff. And I can't say the same about every single CRM. Sometimes you have to pay basically pay to play. So if you have, you know, hundred contacts, that might be a different amount than if you had 10,000 contacts, just as an example. So that's always something to look at. Um, the three CRMs that we recommend, uh, one is HubSpot. Um, so that's a pretty big company. Uh, that's really good if you're, if you already have a team and you're really looking to scale, like maybe you're at, you know, 20 to 50 K a month, uh, you're looking to scale. Uh, you know, maybe it's not the best for beginning uh, companies. Uh, I would say, but if you are looking to scale and have a lot of features and you need to have a sales team and things like that, uh, it's, it's not a bad option at all. Uh, the other one is Keep. Uh, it's a very simple to use platform that we found. Um, I'll be honest, I haven't used it that much. Uh, it came highly recommended. I've, I've tested it a little bit um, and I've seen some really good things. Uh, it has a lot of good functionalities. Um, and then the most, I would say, recommended one that we have is Go High Level. So it's $100 a month. Um, but you get pretty much anything you need in terms of marketing. So 
uh, we actually provide uh, people that sign up for up with us. We give them what's called a snapshot. So we give them all the campaigns, all the systems, everything they need to just automate their business that have been proven to work. And we're always just adding new things. So it's really cool because you're able to add employees, you're able to, um, you know, with the marketing, you can add different uh, campaigns, um, keep everything organized. Everything is very customizable. Um, and it also, you know, it's just that flat rate. You don't have to pay for, for uh, more contacts and all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, yeah, those are the three ones that I recommend. If you have any questions about any of those, uh, just let me know and I can just guide you in the right direction. Um, so yeah, so the other thing too is like, don't get a CRM and just not use it. So any previous clients, even if you lost them, just upload them to your the CRM. Cause then what you could do is you can start reaching out to those people see if they're interested in cleaning services again. Um, and also if you have lead generation services, uh, like Google ads, Facebook ads, uh, LinkedIn, you always want to figure out ways to just integrate that, whether that's through people or just, you know, systems. Uh, there's a great software that I recommend called Zapier. And basically what that'll do is it'll allow you to connect, uh, let's say Facebook ads to a uh, CRM such as Go High Level. So let's say you get a new lead on Facebook ads, that'll just connect right over to this. So you don't have to keep checking both. Um, just keeping everything simple, keeping everything in one place. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Uh, so I'm now going to go over some lead generation channels. So these are the channels that we recommend on looking at. And I always recommend when doing these channels, you want to get it to a point where it's consistent, consistently um, getting you new quote opportunities each and every week, each and every month. So we always evaluate things on a two week cycle. So if something is producing, let's say 10 quotes out every single two weeks, that's a pretty good pace. And, you know, we'll even look, you know, at what's working, what's not working to get that 10 to 15 or 20, you know, and be able to scale with our clients. Um, and once you understand that, you'll be able to transition, you know, that messaging, that targeting, you know, those things that are working over to these other channels. So, you know, start with one. Um, don't try to do too many. Don't do like two or three at once. I promise you that's just going to burn you out. Um, but once you start seeing that consistency, that's usually a good sign. And I would look at things on a two week or three week basis. Um, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna actually create a client avatar. So actually one of our uh, clients, his name is Curtis, and he, uh, he actually comes from the maintenance and uh, kind of like property management uh, industry. He has a full-time job and, and all that kind of stuff. So he has that industry knowledge and those contacts for things like apartment rentals and property managers, things like that. So one of the things that uh, we're really focusing on throughout the testing process is getting him in front of these property managers because he already understands the industry backwards and for forwards. He has other vendors he can upsell with, you know, for HVAC and a bunch of other services. So that was a really good option for him uh, for us to work with. So always think about, you know, your contacts, your experience, um, and then also just who you want to work with. Um, the other thing too is if you're in an area, for example, that has a lot of uh, chiropractors or um, actually in his case, uh, there's a lot of gun shops. Um, so just different types of properties, like whatever's in demand, whatever's open, especially with uh, you know, the times that we're in, always try to consider that because um, targeting is pretty much half the battle. Uh, and you know, if you can get clear on their gender, their interests, their age, all that kind of stuff, uh, you'll be able to even create better messaging for them that's actually going to really resonate with them. You know, even if it's just simple word changes or simple things that you say to them, you know, maybe something you would say to a 50-year-old is not the same thing you would say to someone who's probably 25, 30. Um, but really just try to get clear on the industry and uh, the job title that they have first. And then, you know, once you start working with a lot of doctors, for example, you really under you'll start to understand the problems, the benefits that they're looking for, um, I can tell you property managers, for example, they're always looking to save time, um, have these services to standard and just have someone who's reliable. Um, so you just want to understand your industry as much as possible. <clears throat> oh, and then also this, by the way, um, this is stuff, this is training for your employees. So you want your employees to understand this as well. Okay, uh, let's see. All right, so going to the next slide here. 
right, so these are the platforms that we're gonna use. So uh, the first one is emails. So hopefully you can see this. Uh, okay, there we go. Um, so the first one is emails. So one thing that we do a lot with our clients is uh, cold emailing. And a lot of people think emailing is dead. Um, it's oversaturated. You know, you probably get a lot of like spam emails and stuff like that. Um, but I am promising you email works. It's actually one of the best lead gen channels for commercial cleaning. So uh, this is a great shorter term strategy. And I would say about one to three months uh, where you'll be able to close some deals, get walkthroughs, get quotes out. And uh, what you can do or what I would recommend is using cold emails for more, more, more so just like smaller uh, businesses, uh, using it for smaller businesses and uh, just keeping it as simple as possible. And then also making it sound pretty custom to uh, them, their business, what they need. So there's a thing called uh, custom values that you can use with a lot of these cold email softwares, which I'll recommend in, the, in a couple of minutes. Um, so try to keep it as simple and to the point and also use the main benefits yeah, and then with the larger uh, types of properties, uh, so property managers and you know, construction, some of these bigger projects, things like that, uh, especially with people that are super busy, um, but good context for you to have, I recommend first getting personalized emails instead of, you know, just info at whatever the company name is, dot com. Uh, instead, you get alex at company name, dot com. And I'll recommend some tools for that. And with that, you want to do a lot more follow-ups uh, because it is more worth it. Uh, someone like another example would be a real estate broker uh, who, uh, commercial real estate broker, I should say, uh, who has access to multiple projects. And even if they don't have anything right now, those are amazing contacts for you to have uh, because you're just planting seeds. Uh, and you know, if you have a good follow-up system as well as a system to get them to engage and uh, respond back. Um, that is really going to build the momentum that you need to scale your cleaning business and, you know, not just double, but triple, quadruple and more. Um, the other thing is in person and face to face. So this is more of a last priority after you have maybe three or four lead gen channels uh, that are pretty much automated and systemized. Um, but this can work very well. Um, and what I would recommend is really just trying to target certain types of events um, I mean, now, like, I mean, certain areas, you're going to be able to go to these types of events. Uh, certain areas are pretty shut down right now. It really just depends. Um, but what I always recommend is whether it's an online event, you know, type of networking event, or even if it's uh, in person, uh, it's always good to uh, be very specific about, you know, your approach, your pitch, who you're going after. So instead of going to just a general um, event, unless it's like BNI or something like that, where it could be good contacts, uh, I would recommend trying to be very industry specific. So if you can go to like a real estate expo and you do move and move out, um, that would be an amazing investment in your time as opposed to just some generic uh, networking event where let's be honest, a lot of people just hand out cards and never do anything with it. Um, just a quick networking tip that I'll give to you guys, focus on building relationships um, and being memorable and then also focus on the follow-up afterwards. Uh, don't expect people to follow up with you. You have to follow up. And always give value as well. Uh, if you're able to understand their business, like I said before, uh, when you're building out this avatar, if you understand their business, uh, you'll be able to establish that relationship a lot better. And they're going to think of you when it comes to cleaning. And always, always try to you know have a good follow up system and all that in place. All right. So the third one is cold calling and cold texting. So. Uh, these are kind of two different systems. You can even combine them if you'd like, you know, maybe send, you know, a list, you know, cold text and then cold email. Um, you got to just look at the rules, you know, in your area. It's different if you're in the States versus Canada, for example. Uh, so you just got to keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, with all, just like all these things like emails, whatever it is, you want to have a system for it and a, and a structure. So when you're doing these cold calls, uh, you want to have a structure to it and you always want to be adjusting it. So maybe every 20 cold calls, you look at the numbers, you see, okay, where are people hanging up the phone? You know, if so, where are they hanging up the phone? What can I do to improve that? You just want to, every single little step, you just want to look at the data and um, don't judge the data based on like one or two calls or one or two texts. Uh, you want to look at, you know, dozens of texts and dozens of calls um, before you actually make that decision. Um, but once you establish, you know, cold calling script, for example, uh, you'll be able to replicate that and hire a sales rep 
or you could use a Um, and kind of like I said in the slides, so uh, it, this is a shorter term strategy for uh, especially like small businesses, or you could even contact, you know, some of the bigger, bigger companies, um, although you might have to get transferred and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, so it kind of just depends on, you know, what you want to go after. Um, but, you know, this is really for one to three months, uh, you'd be able to see these results and really just track the data and close down some deals. So oftentimes those smaller deals. Uh, that's going to be a shorter sales cycle, uh, but the larger ones you're going to have to follow up with. It's going to be maybe three to six months or even more. But, you know, these could be anywhere from 10,000 to 100,000 or more. Um, and that could even be on a monthly basis, uh, depending on the, the type of job. Uh, the other thing, too, is Google Ads and SEO. So this is something that we're actually starting to implement with, with our program. Uh, we have someone that we're going to be partnering with. Um, so and uh, is going to be on our team. So this is a longer term strategy. So SEO, it takes a little bit of time to get off the ground. Uh, it's probably gonna take two, three months. Um, but what, what's gonna happen is you're actually gonna get inbound leads, which means if people are looking for cleaning in your area, uh, they're gonna be contacting you versus your competition. So it's really important to get Google, uh, Google reviews, have a good profile. And then also I would definitely hire an expert to do this. I wouldn't try to pretend to be the expert. Um, you know, it's, it's going to save you a lot of time. Um, and it's also going to make you more money in the long run. Uh, even if you have to pay, you know, that upfront cost, uh, just be careful about who you're using. And if you're looking for someone good, uh, we have different contacts and people, if you want to get in touch with us. Um, the other thing that's a little bit more shorter term is Google ads. So if you do both Google ads and SEO, uh, that can be ideal, um, uh, because these people are all inbound they're interested in your services. They're already looking, um, but Google ads is a little bit more shorter term. So you can kind of get some deals through the door while your SEO is taking some time to, to ramp up and really just, uh, start getting results. Um, and yeah, you could get anything from small businesses to larger accounts. Uh, you can even use certain keywords. Um, you know, it's really important to get an expert to do this. Uh, one of the reasons is for example, the keywords can get confusing and, you know, you might think you're targeting one thing, but really, you know, you're getting the wrong types of calls. So you just, it's just 10 times better if you just find someone who does this and understands this, because this, this type of uh, service, just like Facebook ads or any of these other things, uh, it can take years to really just master. Um, but Google ads SEO can be pretty technical. So uh, that's what I'd recommend. So if you don't have that background, um, I would, I would hire someone. Uh, LinkedIn. Oh, and then also when you hire someone, don't like, don't, don't go after the ones that are like a hundred dollars, $200. Like you're going to get that like you're going to get a hundred, two hundred dollars in results, which means you're basically wasting your money. Like if you're going to do it, do it right. Uh, otherwise just don't do it. Um, okay, cool. So LinkedIn, uh, that's another platform that I am so surprised. Like so many cleaning owners don't use LinkedIn. Like it really just like blows my mind. Like, and actually a lot of you guys, and it's not your fault or anything. Um, it's just, you know, maybe the industry or, you know, what you're used to, but you know, it's just a huge, huge uh, potential because you're able to search for the people that you want to get in touch with, whether they're business owners, property managers, uh, real estate brokers, whoever that is. So LinkedIn is an amazing place. So you first want to optimize your profile, maybe put some content out there, make everything look nice. Um, and then you can start to use some systems, some software to actually get in touch with these people. Um, and if you want to do it manually, you can. Uh, you can connect with about 100 people a week, uh, send out that many requests, and really just test and see who's actually responding and test different messages and stuff. Um, and same thing with LinkedIn, if you want it manually or automated, you just got to test the messaging, test different targeting, you know, who you're going after. And then from there, you can pretty much just scale that system up and get in touch with more of those people. And that's, that's the other thing that we actually help with our program. So uh, like I said, construction, property managers, I mean, there's so many different kinds it uh, just depends on who you want to go after. And you can also target people in your area as well. Um, I don't recommend LinkedIn ads. I think it's a total waste. Um, LinkedIn ads can work, but they're very expensive. Um, it's much more efficient to optimize your profile, um, set up direct uh, and simple messaging that is unique to you and your business and use that and be able to scale up uh, whatever it is that's working and test. Uh, the other thing is Facebook. So Facebook, um, we've actually, we actually used to test this for commercial 
and we found it to be pretty expensive. And also the lead quality is not the best. Uh, so the way that we recommend Facebook for commercial cleaning for residential, it's great. Um, especially if you have a CRM, you have a good follow-up process, you know that you have to call these people five, 10 times, or even if you have someone dedicated to that, Facebook can be a huge, huge game changer if you're doing residential. Um, if you're doing commercial, however, what you want to do is install what's called a Facebook pixel onto your website and any other pages that you have online and really just use that data or even use, you know, from your Facebook page and all that kind of stuff and use that data and set up what's called retargeting. So let's say I'm a potential client. I'm a property manager. I found you on LinkedIn. I was checking you out. I never responded to your message, but I do check out your website and it looks nice. And I just, you know, I get distracted. I get busy. If you're setting up retargeting, Next time, you know, I, as a property manager that I log on to Facebook, I'm going to actually see your ad and I'm going to be reminded and your business and your brand is going to be top of mind. So I'm going to contact you. Uh, and if it's not that time, I'll see you again in, you know, a week or two weeks, you know, and this is something that you can do for a dollar a day. It takes a little bit of time to set up, but when you have two or three systems that's running, you have a nice website. Uh, this is a great option for you. And, you know, it can literally just be as cheap as like a dollar or two a day and you can just target those people. So really, really powerful. Um, and you could even just run it right to a call. You could run it to a lead form, however you kind of want to do it. If you have any questions about that, let me know. I know it might sound complicated for some of you. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. We have some other videos on the YouTube channel if you want to check that out as well. All right, so to start actually creating these machines. So like I said, just do one at a time. Don't do more than one. Uh, because you're just going to drive yourself crazy. So uh, emailing, uh, you can use one that we recommend called Lemlist. Uh, that's actually been the best one uh, we found so far. Um, another one that we actually use is, or we used to use, was one called Mailshake. Uh, so this one is uh, pretty good. I haven't used it in a while, um, but I know people that still use it and they get pretty good results. Uh, the other two that we strongly recommend is Mail Merge and GAM. So these are what are called add-ons. So when you have uh, your, if you go to drive.google.com and you go into Google Sheets, which is basically Excel, uh, Google's version of Excel, and you go to add-ons, you can actually install these, uh, these add-ons, either Mail Merge or Yam. And if you have a list of names, numbers, and emails of property managers, uh, you can uh, essentially, you know, send out uh, 50 a day or so. So this is basically a replacement for you having to you know, copy and paste all these people. Um, the other way you could do it is, you know, 10 at a time, you know, you just take 10 emails, you put out your script on the email and you just BCC everyone, which I have a separate video uh, for. Uh, but this is another way you can actually kind of streamline the process. You can track everything uh, and see, you know, how many people opened it, how many people responded and just improve your results along the way. Um, how do you get these leads? So I've actually, I've tested a lot of different software. So the best one I found was D7 Lead Finder. Uh, so basically what you can do is do, you can either do just individual searches. So property managers in Cincinnati, property managers in, I don't know, Chicago, whatever. Um, and then also if you upgrade, you can actually just search for property managers and, and then you could just put in 10 cities and then it'll just combine the whole list. So you can get a pretty big list that way. And that's actually what we do. Um, the other thing is, uh, if you can, uh, if you're going after especially these bigger people, uh, more, more like whales uh, is what we like to call them. Uh, so if you want to get personal email and personal information, uh, you can use a software called Snovio, S-N-O-V.io, uh, or Seamless.ai. There's a bunch of other ones that we've used, uh, but those are just two to get you started. Uh, you can get personal emails from specific companies, and uh, that's something... You know, it'll, it'll take a little bit more personalization and, and follow-ups, uh, but if you just get one or two, uh, that could be a huge help uh, for you and your business. So uh, definitely something to look into. Uh, the other thing is in-person. So if you're doing in-person, uh, you could either do this uh, where you actually just drive around your area and do drop-ins, um, and you can also do networking. So the drop-in thing, that takes a ton of time. Um, it may or may not be worth it. If you've done it before and it's already working, then great. Uh, you know, uh, maybe keep doing that. I wouldn't rely on this as a primary source because it takes a lot of time. Um, but if it already works and you have a good system for it, maybe you give people, you know, chocolates or flowers or, you know, different things, whatever, 
uh, and it already works, especially within a certain type of industry, maybe office buildings, things like that, definitely keep doing that. I'm not going to say like, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say, and, and say, stop doing it if it's already working. Um, but if you haven't done this before, I would start to get these other systems up first, you know, two or three of them, and then start to do uh, in person. Uh, because systems, you could automate that. In person, unless you have someone dedicated to doing this, it's going to require a lot of your time. Um, and, you know, especially as a cleaning owner, your time is valuable. Uh, you're doing a lot of things at once. So the other thing is networking. So be very specific about your pitch, uh, the benefits you provide, the type of networking events, uh, super, super important. Uh, yeah, you can just create that relationship. Uh, you can go on Eventbrite, meetup.com. Uh, you could even Google search. Uh, also BNI or Chamber of Commerce can work. Uh, if you're good at networking, then, you know, look at this. Uh, you know, networking is a skill in itself, uh, can work, can also waste a lot of time. So just be careful about how much time you're spending and seeing and testing the results. So I would evaluate this on maybe a two, three month basis and uh, see how those results go. If you have, uh, like I said, if you have good people skills, if you have patience, if you understand the industry and you're good at following up, um, definitely look at uh, in-person events. And I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, like I said, just make a pitch specific to them and their needs. Uh, don't say, hey, I just do cleaning. Um, offer them a way of saving time. Offer them a way of looking more presentable for customers. Like that's, that's really the, the thing that they're looking for. So uh, cold calling. Uh, so this can also take a lot of time. So if you have someone you can dedicate this to, then great. Uh, if you have some extra time and you can do this, then that's great too. Uh, but you need to be consistent if you're going to do cold calling. That is super, super important. Um, you know, some people that might be like, Hey, call me back in two days. You got to call, you got to make sure you, you write that down. You take a note of it or put it in your CRM to call them back in two days. So you just got to make sure you're on top of it. If, if you're going to do this and don't give up too early, you're probably going to get rejected a lot. You're probably going to have all that, but that's actually a good sign because that means, uh, you're starting to get feedback as to, you know, what you need to change and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, every maybe 20 calls, 30 calls, you make a change. <laughs> if you're just uh, seeing patterns, um, you know, so uh, this is a process. So you need to develop your script and the ability to overcome objections. So uh, cold calling, uh, that is actually something I think we're probably going to add to the group and, you know, some scripts that have been proven to work. A lot of the structure for cold calling is very similar. Um, one thing uh, you can take is if you have any scripts or anything you've used in you know, maybe any course that you've gotten, or maybe you used to do telemarketing or something like that, you can actually see if you can transition that to your business. Um, because oftentimes, you know, it works in one business, if it's already working, uh, you can just take that structure and make it work for uh, your business and, and pretty much innovate on it. Uh, always good to know your numbers. Uh, don't give up too early. Don't change things too early. Uh, always give enough time. Uh, but you can also just like all these other methods, you can split test, you know, maybe, maybe doctors are more like, or less likely to respond than a realtor, uh, which is usually the case. Realtors are usually just by the phone all the time. Um, and then someone like a business owner, they're usually running around just like you and doing a million different things. So, uh, you know, you kind of got to just understand your market and, and be very careful where you put your time. Um, also, you want to call at good time. So usually in the morning or in the evening is best or even around lunchtime. Uh, you know, those are usually best, you know, whenever you're free and you can dedicate to this, like I said, you just got to be consistent at it. That's where a lot of people fall short and that's why they don't succeed at this. And you want to test this for at least a month. Uh, cold texting. Uh, there's different tools. You can use that. Uh, we use one called Twilio. There's another one called text magic. Uh, this is great for short-term burst results. So this is kind of what I use in addition to the systems that we build for our clients. Um, so, you know, in addition, and we're probably going to add uh, cold calling in a little bit, um, but yeah, this is great for uh, results. You can text easily, like, you know, for example, like a thousand people for, you know, just a couple of dollars. So that's super, super powerful. Even if you just get, even if one or two respond, um, but you just got to understand, you know, the rules and the regulations, you know, of your area and make sure you have certain opt out things, whatever that is, you just kind of make sure you get, you follow all that. Um, this is great for, especially people that are super busy, like property managers, apartment rentals, uh, realtors, um, any of those types of people. You could also do businesses as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really good for those ones, especially. And you want to be very clear and to the point. So introduce who you are, what you do, um, how you can help. Um, and then I usually just ask them a question, you know, something like that. I keep things very simple. Uh, that usually works the best. 
no, no one wants to read like any, any of this stuff, like no one wants to read a paragraph. Like no one wants to read like, Hey, my name is Alex. And I, and I do, uh, I do cleaning, uh, all around, you know, uh, this area, you know, uh, if you sign up today, I'll give you 50% off and you know, all this stuff, like no one's, no one's going to care about that. No one's going to read that. Um, it's, you gotta, you gotta just make stuff about them. You can't, you gotta focus on the relationship. You gotta focus on, uh, them. And I know it sounds counterintuitive, but trust me, like, this is, this is the only and best way to go. Uh, the other thing is Google ads and SEO. It's more long-term. Like I said, SEO takes a couple of months, uh, but it's totally worth it. Uh, the leads are so easy to close. They're already looking for your business. You just got to be the one that they find. Uh, so definitely hire an expert. Uh, Google ads is great. Again, hire an expert. Don't be cheap on this. If you're going to do it, do it right. Uh, and then also, uh, we're probably going to do some live interviews. This is something that we're going to start to add onto uh, our service in, in different ways. Uh, and this is something that's uh, a huge, huge opportunity for a lot of you. Uh, LinkedIn, again, is a great opportunity. Uh, if you're not on this, please, please, please just get on it. Uh, we have a masterclass on how to optimize your LinkedIn. If you need that, uh, you know, book a call with us or just, you know, you can get that uh, probably in the description down below. Uh, this can, uh, you can just reach, I, I meant to say reach actually on this, uh, you can actually reach decision makers just by searching for them, um, and then just message them. So either if you're using a tool to message them, or you're just doing it yourself manually, um, that's something that you can do. There's different tools, linked prospect, you need Alfred, Expandy, um, this, this is supposed to have an eye. Um, don't use Chrome extensions. Uh, you're going to get your account blocked. Uh, even with these, you want to use a uh, small, especially if it's a new account, you want to just warm up your account, only send a few messages at first, then send out more messages. It's very similar to the way that email works. You just want to warm this stuff up. That way you don't get blocked or anything like that. Um, you can also test different messages, different targets. Uh, and then also if you have any sales reps, you could even leverage their uh, LinkedIn. Uh, so that's, you know, some of our clients, they have multiple uh, sales reps. So, you know, what we do is we first test, we see what works, and then we kind of replicate what works to different sales reps and just expand that way and scale that up. Uh, Facebook. Uh, Facebook is great. Like I said, residential, commercial, more, uh, more so just, you know, with the retargeting, like I said, uh, you could even use videos in your ads uh, and just collect data. So like, okay, so you know, a thousand people watch, you know, this ad for 50% uh, or 50% of this video ad, uh, you could just keep getting that in front of those people. Cause those are the people that are really interested. Um, and it's more of like a secondary priority. So if you have different lead gen systems in place, you have a good website, you can get your pixel on um, and you have maybe some engagement on Facebook. Uh, this is great. Cause you already have some data. You can already start to do retargeting. Um, the other thing I wanted to quickly mention is being able to analyze the competition and your market. So uh, one thing you can actually look at is your area and competitor uh, clients reviews. So are people looking for professional services? Are they looking for reliable services? Uh, just pretty much just figure out like, what is the demand in your area? Like the answers are already in front of you. You just gotta, you just gotta literally just not be lazy and just like search for it. Uh, and know how to search for it as well, which is literally why I'm creating all this. Um, so you can just look at these Google reviews, see what people like, what they don't like, and use that to advantage. Look at uh, patterns. This is going to take some time, uh, but I promise you this is going to help you and save you a lot of money and time. So the other thing is your avatar. So you can look at, you know, see how many dentist offices. like Google Maps is super easy. You could just literally just look up dentists and see how many dentist offices there are and just kind of see like, you know, where's, where's there a huge opportunity in your market? Uh, you could even use D7 lead finder and just, you know, get the list that way and see how many it pulls. Um, but for just a general idea, you can just look at Google maps, uh, as an example. The other thing is look at the platforms that your competition is actively on. So this is a little bit more advanced. Um, this is kind of more like if you're really like technical and you understand, you know, these systems, you already have things up and running, but you just want to make it better. You can use tools like uh, what are called like AdSpy, and there's a couple other ones where you can actually look at the ads that they're running. Um, even if you go to your competition's uh, Facebook page, uh, you probably haven't noticed this, but if I were to go to, I'll actually just show you an example real quick. Uh, let me click out of this. So if I just go on Facebook right now, 
let's do commercial cleaning services. Yeah, if I just click on Walmart. Okay, so let's say I'm just looking, like, let's say this person, this company is in my area. What I can do is I can actually scroll down. I can go to page transparency. I can actually see what ads they're running. So th these guys are not running any ads. Um, chances are probably a lot of your competition isn't running ads. Um, so that's that's definitely a good opportunity for you. Um, but if you want to look at maybe especially the bigger ones, uh, they may, they're probably more likely to be running ads. Um, so you can always do it that way. So I just wanted to show you that real quick. Um, okay, so let's go ahead to the next slide. So uh, be sure to have a good online presence. So before you even do any of this, uh, I just wanted to quickly mention this. So have a good online presence, have a Google page, have a Facebook page, have a good website. Um, if you need a good website, we have uh, contacts that are very affordable and do a great job. And, uh, but this is super important because this is how people build trust with you. This is what they look at. Uh, you could even offer some type of free value. So what I see a lot of people do is they, um, yeah, like it's great, you know, you're offering cleaning services, all that. Um, but what's even better is if you're able to provide, you know, a free PDF or some type of uh, what we call marketing, like a lead magnet, you know, where they put in their name, they're putting their information, their email and build that list up. That's so much more effective because building that list, that's a huge, huge asset for, to you. And you could use that in email campaigns. You can use that in different things. So uh, see, if, see if there's something of value. And uh, it's, it's a lot easier if you understand your avatar um, and create va uh, avatar specific value. So for example, you have a free guide for uh, property managers on how they can save time in their business, something like that. Uh, the other, okay, so the other thing is uh, being clear on your mission and your vision. So this is just Tesla's. So this is stuff that you can use uh, on your website, on your online presence, uh, as well as with your employees uh, to attract, you know, the right employees and really just, you know, create a lot of motivation within your business, as well as motivation for your customers to consider you for their services. Uh, so mission for Tesla, Tesla's mission is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. Uh, and then the vision is to create the most compelling car company of the 21st century by driving the world transition into electric vehicles. So they're a little bit slightly different, as you can tell. Um, but being very clear about this for your business is going to help you out a lot. And I know it sounds cheesy. It sounds like, oh, why would I do this? You know, I'm just a cleaning company. Like, why, why does it matter if I have a vision? Um, but I'm telling you, this is stuff that's actually going to separate you from a lot of other cleaning businesses. So definitely try to do this. Um, okay, so the other thing too is, so for all of these methods, I want you guys to think about the MTS method. So this is what I use for pretty much all my businesses. So it's, you know, whether it's growing my own businesses or helping clients out, it's finding the right messaging, finding the right targeting, and then how do you scale that? How do you take that to the next level? Once you get that consistency, you know, hey, like, even if I have to invest more, you know, you're already looking at the data, you're already, it's not really taking a risk, you're really just taking a calculated risk, because you already understand the data, you already understand what works. And that's how you really just grow and scale your business. Uh, so, you know, when you're, when you're up to a point where let's say in emails, for example, you're getting out five quotes a week, one or two convert, uh, you're spending maybe a hundred or $200, uh, you know, with people or systems to send that out, but you're making, you know, a thousand dollars, $2,000, then you want to start to think about, okay, how do I, how do I expand this? You know, how do I create more software accounts or how do I create more emails, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so you just want to scale it up once you become ROI positive. Um, and like I said, it might, you might go the first month not being ROI positive or meet maybe even a month and a half, two months. Um, but you know, once this stuff builds momentum uh, and you know that, okay, every dollar I put out, I get a dollar fifty, two dollars three dollars whatever it is, then that's when you want to start you know, asking yourself, how do I scale this stuff up? And you always want to look at data. Don't ever make emotional decisions. Always just make decisions based on data. Uh, it's also very, very important for you guys to own your systems and not pay per lead. I see it so many times. Pay per lead is like the easiest way that you guys can do it. And I know it's very tempting, uh, especially, you know, not having a lot of time and you just rather just get the lead and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, part of the value that we provide is, you know, we kind of set all this stuff, we test it and all that kind of stuff. We just give you the, the leads already, but on the back end, you already have these systems in place. You don't have to, you know, continually like rely on uh, different 
you know, home advisor, I'm, I'm not trying to like bash home advisor and all that kind of stuff, but uh, you know, I've, I've heard a lot of just, you know, kind of horror stories with these different companies that, okay, great. Like they're, you're paying per lead, but like, these are shared leads. Like they're not unique to you and your business. And, you know, they're, they're just looking for the cheapest option a lot of the time. Um, if it or don't get me wrong, if this is already working, if you're using Bark, if you're using some of these other uh, platforms and it's working, great, keep using it. Um, but I also want you to, in addition, uh, start to create your own systems like I'm showing you. Uh, because, you know, let's say Bark or Home Advisor disappears, you're basically screwed. You have no lead generation source. And chances are you're probably, I don't know if you're getting consistent leads with that as well. Um, so you don't really own or have any control over your systems. Or this, you know, let's say you're running, uh, certain types of campaigns, uh, you already understand, okay, I'm going to get this many quotes out every single month. And you're just continually growing that, um, you know, you don't want just something that's, you know, word of mouth or pay per lead or just something that's like random. You want something that's predictable and consistent. Uh, okay. So, uh, we're actually giving out, so the next five people, uh, so if you're watching this, uh, hopefully you stuck around for the whole presentation. If you did, uh, thank you. I'm glad you, Hopefully you got some value from this. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to us. Uh, we're also giving free step-by-step -step strategies on how to scale and grow your commercial cleaning business. So if you go to this link, uh, bit.ly slash 3y10p0m, it's just a short link, just easier to copy. Um, you can actually go to this link, fill out your information and pick a time. So what we'll do is we'll actually ask you questions. We'll learn more about your business. Uh, we'll give you uh, an in-depth step-by-step strategy on what you need to do uh, to grow. And ultimately, uh, we'll also, you know, kind of, if, if we feel like we can help you, uh, we'll go more into what it is that we do and we'll ultimately give you an offer. So I just want to be super clear about that. Um, if we, we only give offers to people that we can help, uh, but at the very, very least, uh, the next five people who do this, uh, we're going to give you just an in-depth strategy, going over your business, uh, doing a deep dive and giving you something, you know, if you want to walk away with and implement, you can, uh, it's not stuff that's like, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not cookie cutter stuff. It's, it's stuff that you can actually implement things you can actually do just like this presentation. I'm telling you what to do. You just got to do it. Um, and we'll tell you exactly how to, how to do it on that call. So please sign up for a time. Uh, I think you'll find it valuable. And I'm kind of just going to leave this off on this quote. So patience, persistence, and perspiration make an unbeatable combination for success. You may have heard of Napoleon Hill, uh, Think and Grow Rich. Um, this is super important. Uh, whether you read the book, whether you like it or not, uh, I love this quote. And I think where a lot of business owners fall short is being patient enough, being persistent enough to actually make these things work for them and their business. And that is really what separates a lot of the the business owners that succeed, the ones that actually, um, you know, take the time, uh, they learn about these things and they do what's necessary to move the needle forward. And they don't, you know, if there's, if there's any type of, you know, failure or, you know, uh, like cold calling was kind of the example that I gave, you know, they keep pushing forward. They make those changes. Uh, they don't let that phase them. And also the other thing too, I want to mention real quick is uh, the reason I've been able to grow at that, at the pace I've been able to with, you know, the businesses and everything like that. Um, a big reason is because, you know, I, I, I learned, you know, a foundational uh, amount for certain things in my business, but at the same time, I don't try to be an expert. I hire people that are much better than I am. Uh, I partner with people that are much better than I am. And I also pay people for their time who are at places uh, that are much, uh, much higher than where I'm at. Um, you know, it's, it's worth it for you to just pay money and invest money into people that already know what they're doing than trying to figure all this stuff out because you're going to make mistakes along the way. And those mistakes can be very expensive um, and also take a lot of time. So, you know, it's up to you to decide, you know, if you want to go the easy way or if you want to kind of just, you know, beat the system and just pay people that already know what they're doing. And, you know, this was something that was hard for me in the beginning because, you know, I was trying to save every penny that I could and all that kind of stuff. So I get it. Um, but I am telling you, like, it is so much better for you to just get people who already know what they're doing and just having them do it. Like, and that way you can focus on what you're doing at, which is cleaning, hiring, growing your business. So it's up to you, um, you know, if you want to book a call with us, but I just want to leave on that. Uh, please, you know, if you're, whatever you do, just t take this presentation, please do me a favor. Uh, don't, don't just like put this in the back burner, just start taking action on this. 
uh, if you do one thing per day that will move the needle forward and start to create these systems uh, in a year's time, you're going to be at a whole other place. I can promise you that. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, just reach out to us. Thanks.